Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to look at the aftermath of the governorship election in Edo State. In the recent Edo State gubernatorial elections, APC candidate Okwebolo has claimed victory, signaling a shift in the political landscape. This results in significant as Governor Obaseki of the PDP faced a tough contest, losing important local government areas to the APC. Now, tensions escalated during the election period, particularly when Obaseki was escorted out of the INEC office, raising questions about the electoral process. The PDP has rallied support from other governors, asserting that Igodalo was the rightful winner, despite the official results favoring the APC. In anticipation of the potential unrest for following the election results, the police have implemented a post-election security strategy. They have issued warnings to troublemakers to maintain order during the contentious period. Now, joining us to discuss this is Kasim Afegwa, is a director of Media APC Campaign Council. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. All right, so we're talking about the election that just happened over the weekend in Edo State. Now, there's a lot that happens, right, with every election cycle. You hear of people who win, you hear of the ones who say, no, we are not supposed to have won, and then it ends in a go to court. But if you look at everything that has happened so far with the election in Edo State, I want to get your take. How do you think um, this worked out, especially for Aina coming, conducting the elections, the voters as well, the responsibility of everyone? What was this like in Edo State? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity of this discussion. Uh, I must commend, uh, you know, all participants at the <clears throat> last election on Saturday because the build-up to the Edo election was one that a lot of people thought was going to be blood bloodletting, you know, killings and all that. But thank God that the Nigerian security forces, namely the military, the police, the DSS, civil defense, and quite a number of other paramilitary organizations are very much on hand to, you know, to help mitigate flashpoints, you know, that could have uh, snowballed into some kind of uh, uh, violence. But we thank God that people were not disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. I've not had cases of people saying that they were prevented from voting and all that. Mm -hmm. We only had one or two cases of people who, who attempted to hijack ballot boxes and all of that, and the security were able to, you know, uh, resolve that, that us immediately. And so, for me, it's, uh, it's uh, a victory for the entire Edo people. Uh, it's a victory that has brought in some level of tranquility and calmness in the state, irrespective of the fact that those who lost uh, were trying to protest yesterday and all of that. But you should expect that when it, when it has to do with emotions, yeah. uh, uh, emotions, emotions and sentiment. So uh, I, I must commend the uh, Nigerian police. I must commend the Nigerian Independent Electoral Commission. I must commend also the other security forces. I must commend our supporters and followers who were very resilient, you know, in the entire process of this election, who were able to bottle up their uh, provocations, you know, uh, in the, in the build-up to the election, and they uh, refused to join uh, members of the PDP on the route to uh, perdition, trying to, you know, cause violence in the state. We were attacked on three or four occasions. We had to lay complaints before the security agencies and all of that. Uh, but thank God, the election came and the victory is as sweet as honey in our mouth. All right. Well, of course, it's sweet for you because, of course, you're a member of the APC um, uh, political party. But I want to get, you know, uh, another side from someone else. So we're joined with with President um, Agbokan, um, Esquire State Coalition Officer, Zenith Labour Party. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you? 
Fantastic. Thank you. All right. So, I mean, same question applies. What do you think of whatever happened in a dose state this weekend? We had the election. Um, uh, you know, the APC obviously won. There was the APC candidate. There was the um, PDP candidate who polled about 247. APC polled about 291. And then the Labour Party candidate who polled about, well, 22,000 um, votes. What do you think of everything that happened over the weekend with INEC doing their job? with the voters turning up, and then, um, you know, even the, the, all the players as well. How do you think the election went in Edo State this weekend? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I want to thank my colleague in the studio. Uh, you have spoken so well. Uh, the fact is that there was an election in Edo State. Uh, the fact is that the people came out to vote. The fact is that the electoral officers did their job. But at the tail end of that Saturday evening, the, the calls started going through their phones and they were asked to stop collation. Hmm. They were asked to stop collation. At the time they had them to stop collation, they already uploaded the results hmm. uh, on the IRA. As at the time they asked them to stop gathering uh, those results, they have already uploaded. So they asked all of them to, uh, security agents, agents came and asked all of them to go straight to INEC office for final collation. Of course, is that they pick the world coalition officers of every agents of every political party, follow them to INEC, but they were asked to stop at the entrance. The coalition officer went in alone, and that was all. Uh, the next morning, they started reading the results of this SACOP, which is like six hours from Benin, because of the bad road, and the, the results from Benin itself were upheld because they want to manipulate it. So the, the election went well, just that it was interrupted midway. And the results were not the one, the true reflection of the wishes of Edo people. Hmm. And well, I'm sure the journalists followed what have happened. And uh, we should be, uh, what I'm saying here should be verified. And the media should also come out forcefully to get the right headlines. If you have a governor elect, you have a governor elect. You have a governor in post, you have a governor in post. And the state should be stated then. Hmm. It's not wrong for anybody can rule the states. We are not, uh, we, the, the connectivity of the citizen to governance process is quite low. So anybody can be a governor. But the process to be genuine. So if the process is not genuine, the stakeholders, the civil society, the media must state it as it is. Hmm. For the records, we are ready for the worst of governance. We have already seen the worst of governance. We are ready for more. But the process should be transparent. And people should say it the way it is. All right. Um, I'm going to come back. <laughs> okay, I, I hear you. Um, of course, it should be transparent. But now, with everything that has happened, some people are saying that the election wasn't the best. Uh, was not one of the best elections that we've seen. And of course, we expect that INEC should have done better because it's just one election. It's an off-cycle election. Um, but still, we're hearing that it's not a free and fair election. Do you agree with that? Yes, the, 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 the election process itself, receiving the period of interception, was marked with uh, vote buying. Hmm. The security agents that were around Hello, <laughs> I think we're having issues with the audio there. Um, okay, Kasim, I'd like to come to you now. Do you think that the election that was held in a dust state over the weekend was free and fair? I don't know of any election in the history of Nigeria that after, after it, there won't be complaints. Mm. Nigerians oftentimes are bad losers. They want to eat their cake and have it. There was a contest on Saturday, and the process was hitch free. Votes were counted, and results were announced. The, the uh, returning officer for the APC was there, the chairman of the party, Jared Tenebe. That of the PDP was there, Saibo uh, Yoha, the chief of staff to the governor and uh, quite a number of other party agents. 
They raised concerns in some areas, which is natural, and uh, all of that were resolved before the final results were out. You see, the danger, the danger in displaying results on IREF, a lot of people don't know this. Like in my local government, Esako East, we were denied over 3,000 votes for reasons of the set of voting, even though there wasn't any overvoting, but the number of accredited voters was less than the number recorded. We were denied 3,000 votes. But if you, if you didn't wait for that uh, compilation to be done by the uh, coalition officer for the world and for the local government, if you post results from the IRF, like to the IRF, right from the world level, and when we got to the local government level, we were denied those 3,000 plus votes. It would have affected whatever you were sending to IRF. So that's why posting results to IRF was hasty, because the law says that where votes cast are more than accredited votes, that particular area stands uh, uh, cancelled. I think section 50, subsection 1 of the electoral, if I'm very correct. So there were cases like that. So when you see people posting a result on IRF without final you know, computation of the actual outcome when all has been addressed, it becomes a problem with consolidated the figures. That's why I considered what they were posting on IRF, whether of Vasekis IRF or INEX IRF, as you know, premeditated and quite hasty. And this is the position of the electoral act. So for us, we had a very robust election. Mm -hmm. We campaigned vigorously, and this victory is well deserved. All right, a victory well deserved. But um, one thing that we know now is, of course, most times when someone loses an election, the, the next cause of action is obviously going to the courts. And now it seems like it's always the courts that determines who is the winner. Um, but before we go in there, I want to I want to take a few comments from social media. So of course, I was scrolling through the streets of social media over the weekend, and a lot of people had so much to say. Um, a, a lot of young people said, well, let me start by Rita saying Nigeria will never get better until INEC is reformed. Moses said, they just showed you guys the template for 2027. Then you go to court, they own the courts too, all are judges in their pockets. Another um, is being said, that's been said is um, an urgent electoral reform needs to be done. If not, copy and paste election will repeat itself in 2027. And finally, someone said, Joe said, God, when will the mandate of our people represent us? So you're seeing young people expressing themselves like this saying most times is the court that you have to go to the courts and this might just be a copy and paste for 2027. do you think this is what has happened now according to some other people i, I wish um president was here to you know answer this but with people saying that this might not just have been the best election um with some 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 people are saying they might be, have been rigging they might have been vote buying and all of that and of course the apc um candidate wasn't the rightful winner do you think there is a threat to our democracy with what has happened in a do state? Well, first of all, let me say that those people whose comments you read may just be members of PDP. Mm. So you don't expect them not you don't expect them not to cry because they've been defeated. You don't expect them not to, you know, you know, uh, come forward with all manners of sentiments, you know, because uh, they lost an election. So I will not take the comment, uh, the comment on social media as the reality of what transpired in Edo State. Because if we follow the social media, according to uh, the Labour Party candidate, Olu Akwata, he won on social media. He was quoting people who poll and they said about 70 percent supported him. But he only scored 22,000 votes at the end of the day. So the reality of what goes out there, if you reconcile the words on ground, they are completely different. I went to my community of Okwela. I voted in my polling unit one, and uh, I queued up to vote, and the votes were counted and reflected exactly what was counted was what was reflected in Benin. So if somebody is sitting on social media in Lagos 
and is writing comments that are not, you know, reflective of the reality on ground. I think that has uh, uh, aren't nonsense. All uh, right. Secondly, okay. we need to. Secondly, we need to change our attitude. You know, the, 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 anything sport, anything election like a sport, a sport game, you have to have the stomach to you know learn to be a good sportsman when you lose an election or when you lose a game. It can be very painful, no doubt. It's all about emotions. But for God's sake, we should try and have some level of attitudinal reorientation of minds and don't see elections as a do or die affair. Even though the governor of the state, the outgoing governor, said that it was going to be a do or die affair, thank God that we have security who were able to mitigate that. What was the business of the governor coming to the coalition center in the first place? He's not a returning officer. He's not, he's not the agent of the of the PDP. And so what was he coming to do? If you come with your paraphernalia of office as a governor, the whole the only intention will be for you to influence certain outcomes. And they were, he was prevented from doing that. And so when people raise concern, they raise doubt and all that, all I am saying is that Senator Monde Okpabolo was duly elected Fulfill all the constitutional requirement that make that makes him a governor elect on Saturday, 21st September. We have been thinking this before now that we campaign around 192 wards in the state. We can campaign around all the 18 local government. We saw the kind of acceptance uh, you know that people gave us, and so that was just reflective of the outcome of the election. Mm. All right, I want to hear from you, Aibuka. Um, what do you think? I mean, I'm sure you heard the comments that I read. A lot of people are saying this might just be a copy and paste um, to the 2027 elections that is to come. Um, uh, this might just be a threat to our democracy. What do you think with the election that happened in Edo State? If people are saying this on social media, I mean, your colleague just said social media doesn't represent whatever is going on in reality. But do you think yes. there might just be an iota of truth of truth in what is being said on social media as well i agree with it partly your social media doesn't translate to votes mm -hmm. but the public opinion on social media is jamming in evaluating uh, the minds of the people i come to your question whether you reflect 2027 election and i i was of the opinion yesterday at the uh, collegial center that uh, we may have to adopt the russian system of totalitarianism uh, because the logistics of voting is too high. Having huge budget to do an election that doesn't count, doesn't, it's not worth it. So in 2027 election, the, the president already on seat should continue until uh, whatever happens. Because organizing another election for that uh, 2027 with huge budget is not worth it. Hmm. We should not do election in Nigeria anymore. We should just continue to allow the president who is there to continue until uh, we get to 100 years. And God calls him. So somebody else will enter this you and continue like up? that. Is this is this you giving up on our electoral process in Nigeria? Because it's it just seems like you're saying I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Let's just leave it as it is. There is no hope that we're going to ha actually have a free and fair election that would reflect the interest of the people. Elections in Nigeria cannot reflect the wish of people anymore. It, mm. it, it, it's. You saw what happened. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you were really sleeping. Yeah. You saw what happened. Election conducted in the venue where the INEC headquarters of Edosi is was counted two days after. Mm. Or was declared two days after, sorry. And when the man came to the, to, to make, present his results, we were very bothered. He should have also explained to her where he has been. Was he kidnapped? Was he hijacked? What happened? No, it, nobody cared. He just came and sat down and said he's a professor. So our issue with our electoral process, you have not asked me that question. I want you to shift from the courtroom. People should not be blaming the judiciary anymore. Mm. The academics, after ruling our election, two months time they will declare strike. Mm -hmm. They are the major corporate in bad governance in Nigeria. The professors, the doctors in our classroom, whom we have rent, who we have delivered our children to, to reform, are not the major problem we are having. So the focus should not be in the courtroom. It should be on them who gladly opened his eyes and said to us that he just coming to deliver his result. And who cares? Mm -hmm. So do you think we should be budgeting to the bill of five billion for election process? It, it's not worth it. Take that money, do road, be there. How much of governance really touched the people? Mm. The people are run, the time is run by dark economy. People do all of this to make money for themselves. 
So the budget doesn't really translate to individuals' life. So why don't we just leave the man there rather than put it 10 billion in an election? No need. Tie three roads. Mm -hmm. Next election, or carry the money, tie road. Just be there. When you are tired of the office, you will leave. All right. I think that's what I'm posting. Okay. I, I'm sure a lot of people will share your sentiments as well, saying, you know what, we shouldn't budget so much money for elections when we're not even sure if um, it's going to reflect the wishes of the people. And I want to talk about the people who came out to vote on that day. I think uh, a total of 561,000 people came out to vote. But we know that Edo State has a population, well, as of 2022, Edo State has a population of over 4.7 million. And if we're seeing uh, just, about, just above 500,000 people coming out to vote, does that tell you that a lot of people are also giving 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 lost hope or losing hope on our electoral process in nigeria and what do you think would happen going forward i want to hear from you i want to hear from you and then i'll i'll hear from kasim as well had a good voters turnout the reason is because most persons who didn't come out perhaps because of economic reason they couldn't get to points where they registered some register in the village, but they couldn't travel to the village because of the high cost of living, which is caused by the APC. So they stayed back. So the volume of votes you even got is even higher than the people who came out. Wow. It's higher. Because there was rainfall. So a lot of people also did not come out who were ready to go and vote. They didn't go because it was raining. They saw it's work. It doesn't work it. Hmm. Are you getting it now? Yeah. A high number. You have such a volume of votes, particularly from Mesaco, uh, where my, uh, my brother is from. The volume of vote there, you know you, how many people live in the village and how many people traveled. So the truth is that the voters turnout on record is higher than the true voters' patronage in that election. Mm. Did it go? No. People should be coming out to vote, but you see the economic reality. I well, spent twenty thousand dollars to village on public transport. Well we on we, public we, transport. Yeah. We hope that you know a lot of because there are so many there are so many accusations there are so many things that's been said and we hope that um, proper investigation will be done. I, I know that this might just move into the the courtroom, but I'm hoping that even the judiciary they they do their due diligence in checking out all of the boxes and making sure that they know what exactly happened on that day and then you know um, the victory is given to the rightful owner. But I want to come to you, Kasim, and this is going to be my last question. Yes, that. but that's where we are now. It's just it's just it's just where we are now. All right, Kasim. What is the media? Where we are now is media. Um, people's perception and commentary. Mm. What is the media report to them? So well, they think that judges are magicians. The judges are going to speak on the, on the election two months, three months time. So mm. it's quite some time. There are some adjustments that will be done. The mm. media should be also be held liable and accountable. For what That's what we're doing. <laughs> I hope and that's exactly what we're doing, and that's the reason why we're having this conversation, to make sure that people are in the know, people have the knowledge of what has gone on with our electoral process in Edo State. But Kasim, I want to come to you, and this is my final question. So the president obviously congratulated, um, you know, the winner of the election, and, <clears throat> excuse me, he says, Edo victory is a sign of the people's support for our economic program. Um, that's according to um, President Bola Tinubu. Do you agree with this? Do you think um, what happened in Edo State the, is a reflection of what the people actually wanted? And then, of course, people are supporting the economic program, which a lot of people are asking, what economic program is that? Because we're here right now in Nigeria where things are so expensive. There's been a crazy inflation that has happened. Fuel subsidy is gone. Anything you want to talk about economic reform is not really there. But do you agree with what the president has said? Before I answer that one, let me you know correct certain certain misconceptions by I Bokai when he mentioned that uh, there should not be an election in Nigeria and that uh, they should just adopt the Russian model. I think that would be an unfair assessment of what happened in Edo. Hmm. Yeah, and he also mentioned he also mentioned uh, Isaco that I the population. If you don't have information please don't don't parrot what you don't know Esaco east where i come from for example has about one hundred and six thousand voters registered voters and this last result only about uh, 34 or 33 thousand voted 
that's almost about 30 percent so is 30 percent uh too too heavy to come from a population of 106,000 voters i don't understand my community alone we have a, we have almost close to 50,000 000 voters population. But the, the, during the election, we didn't have more than about 11 or 12,000 voters. And so you have to study the pattern of uh, elections and the outcome. So it, what I would rather I'd say is that we should have more people participating in the election process. Mm -hmm. There's voters' apathy. If you look at the percentage of those who voted, they don't have 2.2 million voters, according to INEC data. About 500,000 voted in this election, if we put the figures together. So is that reflective enough of the po population of voters that should determine the overwhelming support of, of all? I said no. So okay. there has to be voters' education. People have to continuously invest hope in the electoral process by coming out to vote, not sitting down in their bedroom and when elections are over, they go to television to make commentaries and all of that. Talking about the president's comment, the president has been taking some very hard and bold decisions based on what he met on ground to confront the economic challenges in Nigeria. And what we are experiencing in Nigeria is not peculiar to Nigeria. Studying the economies of other countries you will see the same thing in the UK that is just behind by us here six hours from here to UK. Life has become more and more difficult for people. I've, I've had scenarios of people who are coming back home from UK because life is becoming tough. So the point is, is, it, is the president taking decisions at all? Is taking decisions. Are the decisions yielding the desired results? Not fully yet. But like he said, give me some time. I didn't I didn't uh, beg for this job. I, I, I opted to you know, contest the president of the country, and please don't sympathize with me, I'm going to confront the problems. He's confronting the problems, but as a people, we must give him hope, we must give him support, because government is a two-way traffic, the government and the followers. If the attitude of the average Nigerian is not one that is supportive of government policies and programs, implementation will become a problem. That is why, if you reconcile this with what I, I said with, with respect to performance, you discover that he was trying to bring out the nexus between promise and performance. When, when a leader promises something, he's right, going to perform. In the, in the process of that performance, in the process, people are responsible for implementation. And if those people are not sincere, if they are not honest, saboteurs in government will always want to frustrate right, government sir. effort at helping to mitigate all manners of economic well, challenges. And so I am very, I'm very resolute. I'm supportive of this government. I'm supportive of the fact that we have an APC government coming in Edo. Mm. Because the PDP government has run that state aground. The state is rotting. We have said it repeatedly. Erosion flooding everywhere. The infrastructure decay. We, it is about time for us to sit back and reassess our challenges. And, okay, and sir, we have to end it here now. We have to end it here now. But we want to... What I yeah. want to say, what I want to say is, of course, um, uh, an election has happened. There is a winner, there is a loser, um, which is quite unfortunate. Thank Emotions you. are high, but we hope that you know the people, the 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 interests, the wishes of the people of Edo State is what will be reflected. And if that's what has happened, we hope that you know whoever is coming in is doing what is best for the people of Edo State. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Kasim, I want to say thank you for coming. Aik Bokan, I also want to thank you for coming. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure. All right, um, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about refiner's peg naira at 1,000 naira per dollar and petrol will drop below 600 naira. Please stay with us.